Patreon. This is your bonus episode where we get to talk about certain topics like the top eight list, fireside chat, or versus chat, like what's the better movie, Bill and Ted versus uh, Wayne's World. Huh. Uh, when you subscribe at the $5 tier of the star centric tier uh you get to vote on the topic each month and you cut this out part <laughs> <laughs> okay this month we're gonna do a fireside chat about matrix resurrections i am sandra the last with sass and he is the tom to my tiff nate don't add read the script <laughs> Uh, I'm doing fine. What about, uh, what about you? Not bad. I'm tired. Uh, well, just wanted to, you know. My microwave crapped out. Nobody cares about the microwave. <laughs> Stick to the script. I do. You asked me how I was doing. That's how I'm doing. Gotcha. Uh, just wanted to get a little time for everybody to have a chance to sit down and watch Matrix Resurrections before we chatted about it. Um, it's pretty... Dicey topic, according to the internet. Some people like it, some people don't like it, and that's what we're gonna talk about. This fourth it's Matrix. no difference than any other movie they do. Then, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's uh, that's what happens when you talk about sequels and reboots and spinoffs. Yeah, you never know what you're gonna get. You're either gonna get a gem or a dud. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Our thoughts on what we thought about Ma Matrix Resurrections. Oh, Nate, what were your thoughts and impressions about this fourth Matrix movie after 19 years and the second sequel? Um, I enjoyed it. Enjoyed, enjoyed it quite a bit. A little confusing in the beginning. Uh, another, I know. <laughs> another reason why we sat down and watched it a second time before we decided to uh, tackle this and took some notes. Uh, what about your first thoughts yeah i was the same although the the first time when we watched it i was like they're just redoing the first movie like almost line for line and then they did those those two lines and i was like okay it is line for line and i was then i then you know it clicked yeah that oh wait we're they're re-watching something they're you know and, yeah. and i forget it was later in the movie when i picked up on it so, um, but I, I, yeah, me too. I enjoyed watching it and I liked how they integrated all the other, mo the other movies and yeah. the characters, you know, they brought back some of the characters from the first trilogy. Yeah. So. I guess you can't call it a trilogy anymore. You had a fourth one. Now it's now a it's saga. A, now it's a saga. A quad and now, we, it's a quad many... now it's a quadrology. quadrology. I can't yeah. say it. <laughs> It's easier. Yeah. Um, Matrix Resurrections released in theaters and HBO Max on 12 21 with a running time of 148 minutes. Rated R. Um, I think they could have gotten away with PG-13, in my opinion. Yeah, and there were only, I think, two F-bombs. Two F bombs. That I remember. Uh, and, you know, that means nothing anymore. Every other word that people say this day is an F bomb. I don't know. There wasn't really. There was like, there was no sex scene, so. Yeah. You mean, I'm talking about like, I'm like uh, reloaded, right? Was that reloaded? Yeah, reloaded. Yeah. And Trinity, yeah. Uh, when they're talking about bringing down the house in Zion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Directed by Lana Wachowski. Uh, Screenplay are written by Lana Wachowski, David Mitchell, and Alexander Himon. Scored by Johnny Kilmick. Kilmick? How do you pronounce that? Well, if you spelled it right, it says Klimick. Oh, there you go. Klimick. Uh, budget of $190 million, And we're currently uh, at $140 million, So, ooh, kind of missed the mark there. They're kind of... Um, yeah. But I did find out that the uh, subs for HBO Max uh, outnumbered Disney Plus in the month of December. So. Although, you know, I wonder if those numbers are partly to blame because of COVID. Yeah, People yeah. can't go out as much. Yeah. You know, 
public Plus, places. It so. came a week after Spider Man No Way Home, and that's right. been killing it out of the box office. Yeah. So sometimes it's all about timing. Um before we kind of go into what we liked and what we didn't care for about the movie, I just wanted to ask you your uh what your thoughts about uh Jonathan Groff playing uh Smith or Agent Smith. Agent Smith. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think he did overall, he did pretty good. Um, I mean, there were, I could tell at some parts he was trying to mimic Hugo's yeah, classic, facial yeah. expressions or, or and classic mannerisms from the first, yeah. Movie. yeah, yeah. Um, but I, you know, he did, I, I think he did try to make it his, his character yeah. too. So, like the yeah. same but different, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. yeah, I'm with you overall. I, I enjoyed his interpretation of Smith. Uh, when he was trying to, like you said, mimic or say the classic lines, it was just falling a little bit short. Um, Hugo Weaving was supposed to come back, but due to a scheduling conflict, yeah. he couldn't make it back. So, and and from what I read on the internet, how reliable that is, uh, Lawrence Fishburne, Fishburn, Fishburn, mm-hmm. Fishburn, Fishburn wasn't even asked. Wow. So, um talking about morpheus uh what were your thoughts about yayi abdul mateen the second as morpheus yeah 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 (laughs) yeah yeah. (laughs) uh well i'll i was gonna say one more thing about hugo okay or not Hugh, uh smith yeah the character uh the actor that played him yeah Yeah. him you know they you know he was um you know at the end of the trilogy he agent smith had evolved yeah so this could also be portrayed as part of his evolution yeah but they reset the matrix so right that's why but he, yeah one that's why one could say you had a new morpheus and a new smith and yeah but you know he had still become something else true i'm um, the even in the movie they showed when neil was looking in the mirror he, you know, when he saw himself in the mirror, he saw him, him. But yeah, when yeah. other people, he they saw an old, you know, grizzled, you know, dude. So, yeah, that was trippy. He almost looked like an old uh, DiCaprio. <laughs> uh, it, but anyways, um, who are we talking about now? Yaya. Yeah, 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 Abdul Mateen the second as uh as Morpheus. Morpheus. Yeah. Again, you know, it was an evolution thing because you know, like you had said, they reset the matrix, so it kind of makes sense that you know he's gonna look a little different. Mm-hmm. You know, if they're trying to make it the you know the creators of the matrix mm-hmm. are trying to make it look the same yet different. Well, so, how, how do you think the actor? But the actor portrayed, portraying you know, him, that um, Lawrence Fishburne did in three movies. I think he did. I mean, I think overall, I think all the characters did, you know, good at portraying who they were supposed to be. You know, ones that had that were different from the original yeah. actors. We're talking about new characters. What about the Bugs's character, played by Jessica Henwick, which she had some roles in Game of Thrones. Yeah, um, I liked her character. Uh, she was, uh, I liked how, and this might've been some symbolism, you know, when she's plugged into the system, she's got blue hair Yeah. and there was a lot of blue popping up everywhere. Well, yeah, they just, most people know. (laughs) I don't know if that was part of the. Most people know about the blue pill, the red pill, the blue pill, you stay in the matrix. Yeah. I mean, even we're going to be talking about Neil Patrick Harris character, the analyst, he was wearing his blue the, frames. Yeah, blue yeah. frames to let you know that, you know, and the pills that Neo kept the, to keep them, you know, under, I guess, control. Uh, right. Blue pills, you know. Um. Yeah, I think she did a pretty good job. I liked her character. Kind of reminded me of Morpheus's character in the first movie, trying to hunt it because she was um, yeah. hunting down Neo or looking for Neo and she came across, you know, uh, Morpheus playing an agent and a modal in a program. Yeah. It was like layers on top of layers yeah. in this yeah. movie. 
which once again goes back to the, the like the first 15 30 minutes is so confusing once you watch it and you rewatch it that first 15 minutes makes way more sense the second or third viewing than mm -hmm. when you're coming right out of the gate on the first viewing um since we didn't have the architect like we did in the second reloaded and revolutions what'd you think about neil patrick harris's character as the analyst he is he is such a a wide spectrum actor you know he can play any part oh, yeah. and well he, he was in another like holiday movie eight bit christmas which i thought yeah. he did a great job in he yeah you know he's a good guy in that one yeah. you know uh not really so much as a good guy but um he 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 can play either either side you know good guy or you know villain or you know he played count a womanizer like in uh how i met your mother yeah you know count olaf and lemony snicket yeah yeah the series on netflix yeah i think he, him as an actor he's he's proven i think he he can cover a large spectrum right uh he's not typecast yeah 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 i think my when i first saw him as doogie hauser i'm like a, he's gonna be like typecast into this slot hole but he's got a lot of theater and broadway singing in, in his background in which he's right presented with the golden globes or the oscars enough time so yeah he's, oh yeah yeah uh -huh. so yeah he's got a, a large range so you can't pigeonhole him into certain things like right. certain characters right uh yeah certain i'm not characters actors actors yeah um uh, he uh i was gonna say he uh no i forgot what i was gonna say you want to jump on to Jada Pickens Smith as Niobe? I almost didn't. Well, yeah, or I almost didn't rec recognize yeah. her, and only because I knew she was in it. Yeah, and yeah. I knew we were looking out for. Her. Yeah. Yeah, the one actor or actress I should say that was in here that I think you made me aware of, but did not know where she was until we looked it up after the movie was done was Christina Ricci. Yeah. Who to me. When you tell me who she looked like, she looked like a young Michelle Pfeiffer in the in the, uh, the yeah. brainstorming she, room sessions. Yeah, she had such a small part. Yeah, I don't. I mean, they could have just cut her out. They they she didn't need to be there. I don't know even why. I don't even know why she was there. Yeah, she was yeah and insignificant to the story. I don't know. <laughs> circling back around, people not being in the movie, but should. Did you miss Lawrence Fishburne? Well, yeah, of course I did. But you know again i mean they did mention him yeah um you know when niobe was doing her whole backstory of, yeah. you know how well, how the new human city yeah so he could have he could have i i think that if you had cut the funny thing about jada pickett smith's character in the matrix trilogy is she pops up as almost a i wouldn't say a nobody but you're trying to figure out where Where's this backstory history between her and Morpheus? And she just seems to come out of the blue. And unless you played the video game Enter the Matrix, which gives a lot more backstory to Reloaded, yeah. you're like wondering what's going on. And I think, you know, one of the reasons why, you know, listen to various podcasts lately, why um Reloaded and revolutions might have suffered a bit is because they uh the wachowski siblings had so much going on i think it was like the first matrix movie to me feels a lot like the first pirates of the caribbean movie they wrote a great script they did it and it just took lock took off like wildfire and you know disney warner bros in this case is like okay we want more movies so okay but they decided to do you know two movies back to back plus this video game for more backstory and i think comics were involved so you had all this stuff going on so i think yeah. it did suffer the the quality of reloaded and revolutions uh suffered quite a bit and that's why so many people love the first one but are not big fans this of reloading Re uh, revolutions and what i've stated on my opinion about my uh i don't say tolerance but entry level or of being entertained is like when we when we did our um Pod, not a, a, a episode on um id4 was in resurgence oh, resurgence yeah mm -hmm. so yeah over there check that out i just you know my uh i i guess i'm just so 
easily entertained. I mean, it's got to be really, really bad for me to really, A-tor. really not like it. You know, <laughs> A-tor. Um, So, but, you know, even, you know, on our review on Home Sweet Home Alone, I mean, check that episode out. Uh, I enjoyed it for what it is, but mm-hmm. if you want my deeper thoughts, our deep- Yeah, why don't we move into likes and dislikes? Gotcha. Pros and cons. Well, pros and cons, whatever you want to call it. Uh, What'd you like about the movie, Nate? Uh, well, fun fact or tidbit, that which uh, I found out by listening to another podcast about this movie. Um, the actor that plays Tiff, Tiffany, Tiff's Trinity, Trinity's, you know, husband, Chad. Mm-hmm. is actually the director of John Wick and also is Keanu Reeves' stunt double in the first three Matrix movies. Oh, nice. And his real yeah. name is Chad, so. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> you know. <laughs> nice. You got, you got one? Uh, yeah, I liked uh, a lot. I like how they had cameo, I guess you'd call them cameos, of, yeah. of characters from the first, the tr- first three movies. Mm-hmm. Um, especially the Merovingian. Yeah, that's yeah, that's one. And he in my he life. was still saucy as ever. Yeah, <laughs> bitter Frenchman. <laughs> yeah, I th- that his cameo for me it, it places in what I like and what I didn't care for. Yeah, I liked seeing him because even though with the you know he looked like the uh, the guy and uh, the father in uh, History of the World Part One who was in the cage. Because the you know the king had him locked up, he. But once he started talking, it's like oh, it's the. I mean, he yeah. looks homeless with a beard, and he was oh, very, I know. He had gray clothes. He was clean shaven. You know, yeah. Like, you know, like a true Frenchman. And yeah. then here he's in what I don't like about it. He just starts raving like a freaking lunatic, just spitting out random words. Uh huh. And it's just like you know, so like that's like you know, like. That he popped up as a cameo, yeah. but um, yeah, him being a lunatic was. It, you know, some of the gibberish he was spouting off was like I don't know, their subtle way of, kind of, spitting at social media. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, <laughs> I don't know if that was their intention, but you know that's what I and I thought it was really funny, but. Uh, yeah, I like, I really liked that, you know, they, they had him in there. And I, again, like bef- going into it, I knew he was in it. I just didn't know how they were going to work him into it. I didn't, I don't know. So for yeah. me, it was a complete surprise. Yeah, another character they came in for a, l- a, a little bit bigger of a cameo role was Sati, yeah. the little girl. Uh, unfortunately, you know, when I looked it up, not the same actress uh, that played played her in you know in uh oh it wasn't nope oh nope Too wow different act but you know close enough i guess oh, it was really close yeah maybe maybe she's not maybe the Could original act- maybe me. the original actress isn't an, an uh, in the screen actors guild and who knows uh, but yeah i liked how they brought her in especially during the montage of in the movie where Neo's going through the repetition of work and eating and coffee and whatever. And they show her a couple of times, you know, how she's kind of keeping an eye on him, you know, which is uh, interesting. Yeah. Some things, you know, you don't pick up on the first viewing, but you know, yeah. but I was piggybacking off of that. I, I also do like the fact that Neo Trinity, Morpheus, uh, Smith and Niobe are all back in here. I don't know if the movie would still work if those key players, whether they're the same actors or not, um, I don't know if it, it would work. But, I mean, that's what you're going to go see, you know. Yeah. You got another, uh, another like? Yeah, I do. Uh, I liked when the part in the movie when they walk, Neo and Bugs, they walk into the the room where he first met Morpheus. And if you looked in the background, they had the first movie playing yeah. that scene in yeah. the, you know, but they said, you know, that that was, this was the game that he had written in, yeah. you know, as his rebooted self. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I, you know, I liked how they, again, it was a connection to the first movie. Yeah, they, 
I think I think they did a very good job of having little uh, flashbacks or what 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 was going on in Neo's head when they're they're showing certain certain scenes of the first three movies, you know. So I thought they did a good job uh, with that. Um, uh, another thing that I liked and didn't care for at the same time that this movie is it feels like it's a it's a slow burn movie, which I like and don't like. Mm -hmm. uh, but it felt like I know the first movie is kind of the same way, but it just felt like this one was a little slower of a burn than the first Matrix movie that came out in 1999. Yeah. Got any more likes before um, we head on to no, you know, things we didn't care for? Let's go into that. Okay. What's your first point you don't don't care for? I'm sure I got one that I'm sure might I've already stated and you you might agree with me. Go ahead. Uh the first 15 30 minutes uh, you, it, the first on the first viewing it's just you're like what? <laughs> yeah. It's like you uh -huh. reckon you recognize uh you know, the scene Abdul Mateen the second as Morpheus, but he's dressed as an agent. So you're like, what the hell's going on? And, and it's a, it's a re almost a shot for shot remake of the first 15 minutes of the first matrix movie, except for, you know, there's a different, something changes on the roof, you know? So you're just kind of, you're trying to piece it all together and you're going, what, but what is going on? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it definitely, um, upon the second, third, fourth viewing, the it makes much more sense. But the first viewing, it can yeah, can confuse anybody. One character that was five minutes, just that. One of the characters <laughs> that um, it's like I was kind of like not hot on on the first viewing, but watching it the second time, he started to annoy me. Jude, the Jude character. <laughs> I think uh, that was the purpose. That was the point. <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh, for me, one of the thing it was the first time, both well, actually both times that I've watched it there, and I don't want to give too much away for those who haven't seen it yet, but towards, you know, the end when they're not really the final battle, but, uh, the, when they go into the swarm mind, the hive mind, they go, the, yeah, the swarm starts coming after yeah. them. And the analyst has them jumping out of windows and oh. killing, you know, turning themselves into bombs and all that. The jumping out of windows was disturbing for me yeah. because it made me think of 9-11 when people were jumping out of the Twin Towers to basically, you know, well, you know, you're not walking away from that. But, you know, that that's where my mind went. And it, that was that I didn't care for that. I know that's probably wasn't their intention, but um Yeah, this version of the Matrix is a lot different. I mean, it's sort of like Matrix One is like DOS <laughs> and then the the current and then like the current Matrix movie is more like the current operating system, yeah. uh, Windows operating system, you know. Yeah. Um yeah, it just, it was easier for, it seemed like it was much easier for the agents or the analysts to um, hack into other people a lot quicker. Everything is, I even, I'll go back to one of the things I liked was like, unlike the first movie where they needed to find a phone to go oh, in and updates, out. Yeah. For some reason now it's mirrors. Yeah. And I don't understand that, but. I guess that I mean there's there's a there's hints of Alice in Wonderland and Alice through the Looking Glass, yeah, you know, subtle, uh, and yeah. yeah, very subtle. So I mean that's clearly Alice through the Looking Glass yeah. reference, you know. Yeah. Um. You got any other uh, dislikes? I don't know if it's really a dislike, but the the and. You know, this may have gone back to when we were talking about Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah. The scenes where he's like a therapist. Yeah. Was disturbingly realistic. I think he nailed it. He, he did. really nailed he it. He nailed it. Because I'm just sitting there going, oh, my God, I feel like I'm in one of my 
therapy sessions. Well, when you're first watching, when we first watched this, he just, it's like, we knew, okay, he's the analyst. That's all we knew is like, how does he work into this movie? Is he the replacement of the architect and everything? But he made his role so well because of his role in the matrix itself, he was keeping a close eye on uh-huh. Neo and Trinity, you know, which you find out, out later. So for him to pose as yeah, you find out why Thomas yeah. Anderson's AKA Neo's therapist, because, you know, he does look like, I think Keanu did a great job pretending he's like, am I losing my mind? Cause he's having all these like flashbacks or these memories, memories that yeah. he don't know if they're real or not. You know, and then they just said, well, you you have an active imagination. You made up the Matrix game. And yeah. Yeah. Da, 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 he's, da, da. So he's invalidating his. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's keeping basically he's keeping him in check. Yeah. And then towards the end of the movie where Neil Patrick Harris's character, the analyst, really shows his hands on who he is and everything. It just blows it out of the water. And the funny thing is, is when you watch it a second, third time, because you know what's, you know, what his character is capable of and what it's trying to do, when you first see him, when you rewatch it, you're like, man, you're just keeping Neil in check, you know? Uh-huh. So, yeah. um, you know, do you need more pills? You know? Yeah. <laughs> or prescription. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, the whole brain for me, one of the things I didn't care for. Oh, is the whole. Yes. Brains, uh, brainstorming session in the big room, and they're using all the key words from the first Matrix movie and over and over again. It just like it didn't care for it for the first time when we rewatched it the second time. I liked it even less. So. Like, yeah, no. <laughs> but for me, it's there's more. For me, there's more good in the movie. Than oh yeah. These annoying little things. Yeah. And um, I'll just quickly piggyback on that. There's a post credit scene. And I, on the sequel centric scale, I would just tell you to ditch it, <clears throat> just ditch it. It's it's not worth sitting. I mean, if you're, I mean, watching it on HBO Max and you want to see it, fast forward it. But in my opinion, just it's not worth it. Ditch yeah, it. think about those that sat through the credits at the theater. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they got well, that. You know, the yeah, yeah. Because we're trained now because of Marvel and Disney because yeah. of the Marvel movies. Stay to the end, you know. And what, Josh Whedon? No. Oh. <laughs> uh, you know. Any other things you didn't care for about uh, the movie? No, not really. I had more likes than dislikes. I agree with like you. you. I have listened to a, a few other uh, podcasts that I listen to, and uh, some of the other podcasts are kind of split. It's kind of interesting just listening to people who just think this movie is the worst out of the four, which I can understand. <laughs> I mean, I, I, my, <laughs> and I keep going. I, I keep circling back around the Pirates of the Caribbean because, you know, like, Keanu Reeves, he is Neo. Like Jack, uh, Johnny, Johnny Depp, Depp is Jack Sparrow. And in my opinion, I think the fourth Pirates of the Caribbean bearing movie for me is just it's not my favorite. It's at it's at the bottom of the Pirates movies for and this. And so I heard from other people. Sorry, I didn't mean to diss your boyfriend. Um, <laughs> you know, for me, um, it's hard when you get this many movies into a franchise unless it's a movie like harry potter or it's based off of books and you're just building you know you're you're risking stuff and even you know i'm sure you know fast nine is you know i heard it was good but you know not as good as four and five because paul walker's not in it so i mean the longer well they really can't help that the longer <laughs> a series goes Jeez. you know you can have a t- you know like the man with no name trilogy that's three movies with clint eastwood and it's a classic and you gonna make me watch those now yeah oh, okay it's like the back to the future is you he know singing? it's like but what does he sing no <laughs> paint the wagons uh no but you know i hollywood is so geared up on which it states in even in this movie sequels reboots remakes you know and um yeah you know, I like how they did their subtle stabs at Warner Brother. <laughs> well, yeah, Warner I don't Brothers. know. I don't know if that was <laughs> Warner Brothers doing it to themselves or Lana Wachowski doing yeah, it. Yeah, whoever them because, you was know, doing it, I thought it was very clever. <laughs> well, it was in our uh, January episode of Tidbits, you know, that we said like, you know, Warner Brothers was going to do this movie 
with or without Lana Wachowski. So, mm. you know, some people believe that the reason why this movie is hot garbage is because she tanked it on purpose as a giant middle finger mm. to Warner Brothers. I don't think so, but... Yeah, not either. Everybody to their own opinion. Yeah. So... Any last minute thoughts? I think we pretty much got them out. Okay. Um, when I was watching this, I, um, you know, because the, the Neo Trinity, that such a powerful couple in this movie, made me think of another power couple in, in another franchise. So I was wondering, in your opinion, who makes the better on screen franchise couple, Neo and Trinity or Anakin and Padme? Neo and Trinity. I would say um, Anakin and Pat kind of, to me, felt forced. Well. But then, you know. I would say. That's another episode. True. <laughs> well, when they first met, he was nine. She was 14. Yeah. You know, once again, I always thought before they did the prequel movies, I always thought him as a, he was 13, 14. Like, you know, how Yoda said in Empire Strikes. Oh, too old, like his father. We're at the training. Oh, yeah. So. But, okay. Okay. And, uh, my, you know, the Machete Order in Star Wars. Yeah. My opinion is you could watch, in Machete Order, watch four and then one, two, three. Yeah, you could. Yeah. This is, um, yeah. I, I don't know if I would, but. You could almost watch this movie without watching the other three and f follow it. For the most part, it's like, okay, there's a connection between these, you know, he's trying to find her. There's a connection, stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, you know, I think everybody's going to, who's never seen the movie or seen the original stories, you're going to get lost in the first 15, 30 minutes anyways. But um, I'd be curious to know, I'd be curious to meet anybody who hasn't seen the first three and watch this one first. Yeah. See what their opinion yeah. is. But if you've been around long enough, because, you know. For the longest time before this movie came out, oh, the Matrix! You got to see the Matrix, the Matrix, the Matrix. The oh, first I one, know, yeah. The Matrix, like you know, groundbreaking special effects at the time and kung fu action and stuff like that. Um, even though this is a fireside chat, if we, if uh, how would you rate it on the sequel centric scale? So first of all, does it sequel? Yes, because for you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I would rate it, you know, being that I enjoyed the rest of the, the series. Yeah. Uh, I would say watch it. Just watch it? Watch it or stream it, yeah. I mean, me personally, I would Well, would you? I would probably buy it because I have the other three. Gotcha. Yeah, I would tell anybody to at least, you know, watch it. You know, if you know someone's got the HBO Max packaging and borrow it, watch it. Is it, and I would only say if you're just, if you like the Matrix uh, franchise, like Sandy and I, I would tell you straight up, uh, you know, buy it when it comes out on physical media or, or get HBO Max. Yeah. Because you get all that extra stuff too. Mm -hmm. Well, Patreons, I hope you enjoyed this a bonus episode of uh, Fireside Chat. Um Post your thoughts uh, or your, how you would rate it, sequel-centric style, down in the comments below. Um, and don't forget, when you subscribe to the $5 tier, the star-centric tier. Starter-centric. Five. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sorry. Sorry. Never I mind. Was, <laughs> I was going for if you want to vote. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, don't forget if you want to vote on what the next bonus episode next month is, you got to start at the $5 tier or the star centric tier. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, don't forget about the, uh, challenge that we posted, uh, that goes to the end of March, uh, to upgrade your tier for just one month. And if mm -hmm. you go from one to five, they get you three votes and, or entries and um, you get the vote on the next bonus content. So until next time, we will see you. Bye everybody. <laughs>